No, I don't waste no time Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua dangle george a social media marketing online coach and as you can see i have got the pandemic beard going on uh, obviously we're all in the same situation now we're all stuck indoors stuck inside quarantine lockdown all the bells and whistles everything and i just thought i'll take you guys along with me on my day to show you guys you know basically what has changed and what hasn't changed in the life of a social media marketing agency owner now that we are all in lockdown so it's currently 10 minutes to 10 um, i have got a call at 11 30 so we've got a bit of time what i'm going to do is have one deep work session before the call and then uh, hop on that call i've actually got uh five or potentially five calls i've got four confirmed calls today um all potential calls with uh, all, all calls with potential social media marketing clients and then we've got one in between call with a old client that i actually reached out to uh last week just to see how he's getting on and that is something that like basically a little quick tip for you guys if you are doing social media marketing and you know obviously you're in the same situation as we're all in with the pandemic and the virus etc reach out to all of your old clients whether you've ended on bad terms or not whether you know they've decided to stop working with you regardless of the situation reach out to them and just say hey you know um, just thought i'll reach out and see how you're getting on with um you know with the virus etc and see if it's affecting your business in any way and i did this last week um i was actually part of um, like one of my uh, course modules where i show you guys how to basically you know continue to build bridges and network and um what actually happened was that he reached out to me and said hey um you know things are going okay but um you've actually contacted us at the right moment because um we've just finished um, basically running the ads and we want someone to basically you know continue with the campaigns and monitor how everything's are going because they can't get past the same point they need to scale so that is why um you know i basically reached out at the right moment and the right time so like i said that is a sort of call that i have got potentially later today if not um we are on good terms so i might just ring him over the weekend it's friday at the time of recording this here's a friday yeah it's friday it's weird like because every day is the same i just really can't figure out what day it is sometimes um but yeah like i said four calls today um i've actually tried out a new outreach method which um, i'm actually going to be sharing with my uh, basically the core students and those who are enrolled in the coaching tried it out as a test and you know that is basically where we got the four calls from and what i'm going to do is basically see how the calls go see if they are qualified to you know basically work with us as an agency and if i think this method is effective then obviously I'll roll it out to those who enroll into the program. But anyway, for now, I'm going to switch the Hoover back on and then get started with work block number one. By the way, guys, for those who are wondering how like the morning routine is now with everything, literally nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is that I now get up at seven o'clock, so I've changed up my uh, ring light to basically, or ring light, my basically my wake up light to uh, start shining brightly at half past six. Then come over here, um, I read a book for about half an hour, currently reading High Performance Habits, which was recommended to me by a Australian digital marketer called Isaac. So Isaac, if you're watching this, uh, shout out to you and uh, appreciate you recommending this book to me. From there, I go for a morning walk and then I start on a mini work block, uh, look at the IPAs for the rest of the day. And uh, that is basically what the morning routine currently consists of. So guys, in terms of the calls for today, um, a funny thing just happened. I thought I had four calls today. Uh, but it turns out that one of the calls was booked for Monday. So when I went to basically announce that I've only got uh, three calls today, a fourth person uh, booked another call for half past one today. And the random thing is, so all of these calls have basically come from the new outreach method that I'm trying, but this third call, so the 13.30 to two o'clock, uh, this call was from someone who we have not reached out to, and the budget for this person, um, if I could get up in just a moment, is between two and 10K a month. So that is quite interesting uh, to see you know, where this person has come from because we don't actually get a lot of organic outreach um, or, or organic, um, basically, you know, discovery calls. So um, yeah, that, that's obviously pretty cool to see. By the way, guys, another thing I'm testing out is this daily health tracker, uh, basically to keep everything on point, especially now during the, 
uh, the pandemic, you know, the the lockdown, etc. I want to try and keep in routine as much as possible. And one thing that I struggled with was not necessarily waking up. I do wake up fairly early, but actually getting out of bed. Um, what I basically want to prevent myself from doing is grabbing my laptop and working from uh, literally from inside my bed. So what I'm basically trying to do now is keep track of the times that I get up uh, to basically motivate myself to get up early. As you can see, you know, I'm slowly uh, getting up back uh, to around seven o'clock again. Um, I try and keep track of my weight as well uh, because obviously, you know, I do come from a fitness background. So morning weigh in, I track if I journal, if I go for my morning walk, um, my deep work block. So before my uh, before I start work, I do a bit of light work. So I check like the schedule, etc. But I do not consider that a deep work block. So start work is the deep work block. Um, I cross it off if the deep work block was actually a deep work block. Then I track my calories, my vitamins, I focus on income producing activities and I give myself a daily rating. So um, like I said, it's been quite effective. I've enjoyed uh, keeping track of it and I do feel like that what gets measured gets managed. What's going on guys, so I've got another deep work block done, so on my health tracker I can uh, basically track that as a deep work block and it's 10 minutes now until my uh, first sales call of the day and as you can probably tell I am fully like fully clothed, you know, um, I've got my jeans on, a nice t-shirt, shower, um, haven't had a shave obviously but you know I have done my hair as if I'm going out and that is not necessarily for the sales call or because I'm filming the vlog or anything like that. The reason for that is because I want to stick into a routine as much as possible now with the lockdown. You know it's very easy to now uh, wear like jogging bottoms, um, you know just a to basically pajamas or anything like that and I understand that that is very easy especially because no one sees you anyway but what you need to try and do is try and still stick to that routine still get dressed still get a shower still brush your teeth every single day as if you are going out and you'll notice that you'll be much much more productive because of it because when I basically get dressed and when I'm fully clothed I know okay I'm in work mode now I'm going to get ready because if you are still in your jogging bottoms and your hoodie or anything like that it's very easy to stay in in sloth mode and just to chill and it's much more tempting to you know watch Netflix or watch YouTube or anything like that so trick your brain into thinking that you're actually going to work or you're actually getting stuff done by getting dressed as if you are going somewhere going to a meeting etc and you'll notice that you'll get much much done because of it you'll be much much more productive because of it and like I said you'll get more work done so enough rambling on for now I'm gonna prepare, 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 prepare for this call, and then I'll see you guys after it. Hello, uh, uh, hello. Hi, good morning, Gaffer. Uh, hello, good morning. What's going on, guys? So, um, my camera died, um, like literally like two seconds into that call, so I couldn't change the battery. Um, it went okay. wasn't um, like nothing, nothing special to be fair. Um, interesting guy. He basically has his. Um, own online info product about learning more quickly, being more productive, biohacking, etc. Um, and I mentioned that you know obviously that is very hot topic, especially with aspiring entrepreneurs, millennial entrepreneurs, etc. Um, so I basically recommended a video sales letter funnel where we run paid traffic to his course, um, and I also highly recommend him to up the price. Um, because the course he yeah, had, like I've, I've seen the inside of it, you know, you can definitely charge much, much more for that. Anyway, between 500 and 1,000 euros would definitely be um, basically undervaluing, still even undervaluing his course, but at least he'll be in, you know, some money from it. But anyway, um, we've now got a call scheduled for a week from today. Today's Friday, so next Friday. Quick tip, um, what I do with people that um, schedule a second call is I schedule that second call again for them in Calendly. So I'll just fill out my Calendly link as if I am them. Why? Because they get email and text message reminders and it's just a very easy way of getting that sort of micro commitment out of them. I usually try and also get analyst access to their business manager. Again, just a mini like micro commitment basically. Um, and I basically say, listen, you know, I don't want to be giving out generic advice. Um, what you can do is you can give me analyst access to the business manager. I cannot change anything. I cannot delete or add any, um, you know, things to the business manager. But what I can do is I can analyze what you've currently got. And the next time you hop on a call, I can give you more of a um, structured and, you know, more of a 
plan that is tailored to where you are at. Um, and that way, you know, you've got that double commitment. You've got the, the call and you've got the um, analyst access. But uh, this guy hasn't actually ran any Facebook ads before. His course um, basically gets sold via word of mouth and um, basically within his network, it sort of gets spread. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it was like through affiliate links or if it was just basically getting promoted through word of mouth. But um, interesting stuff, interesting call. I've got another call in 20 minutes, um, which I will mention something about in just a second. Um, I'm gonna quickly grab a drink and then I'll see you guys in, uh, in two minutes. Oh, okay guys, so I just filled up the, my protein uh, gallon water bottle. But anyway, in terms of the call that I have in 15 minutes from now, um, it's actually a discovery call with someone who does not have the right budget uh, for us to work together so his advertising budget is 200 pounds or dollars i'm not 100 sure a month and obviously with that budget he will not be able to afford our retainer but the reason why i want to hop on this call today is to build that bridge okay this um judging from his profile he has got a lot of people in his network that could potentially use our services. So what I'm going to do today, and I'm going to mention this from the start, is that with the budget that he's got, he won't be able to afford our retainer and it won't be a win-win situation. Now, we always aim to go for that win-win situation because you know, we can easily take on this, this client now, charge him 1000 1500 a month. Um, but because his budget is limited and his ad budget is limited, it wouldn't be a right fit and he will be frustrated with us and he will feel you know basically uh, hard done by because it you know, like I said we won't be able to get any type of results with 200 a month so um, rather than trying to persuade this guy into giving us a thousand which is five times as much as his actual ad budget I'm just gonna say to him listen um, you know in terms of the retainer our retainer is starts at four figures so what I would want to do today is actually give you some free advice, free value. You can go and implement it. Um, if you notice that this is profitable, then we can always, you know, um, get back in touch, reconnect and renegotiate. But for now, I don't think it is a right fit and I wouldn't feel um, it wouldn't feel right for me to pitch our service. Then what you can also do is if he is happy with our service um, or with the advice that I give him, and he still can't afford our retainer. I can say, well, listen, um, if you are trying to find a way to repay me for the value that I've given, um, you could refer us on to some of your uh, network. And you know that way I can get either a positive testimonial out of them, a referral, or like I said, I can build that bridge for uh, later down the line, because obviously this is a long-term play. You know, As much as we are in this to uh, make money and earn money online, we are out there to actually you know, change and impact people's lives and businesses and you know build up that long-term reputation so that is my uh, two second or two minute pitch for now um, i'm going to prepare for this next call and then after that we'll have a little moment to grab breakfast hi good to meet you yeah nice to meet you how are you i'm good are you in oh you're in the background yeah yeah well i yeah. use zoom all the time for my student stuff yeah, yeah. Um, thank you you also mentioned that you've had a um, bad experience in the past with uh, facebook ads with a previous agency he tried up we tried advertising it on Facebook and it just didn't work. So it ended up costing me quite a bit of money in ads. Alright guys, so that was very, very unexpected. Um so basically it turns out this guy has got multiple courses and, and coaching programs and we literally spent an entire hour talking about entrepreneurship, how to promote things, Russell Brunson, sales funnel, value ladders, etc. And it turns out, you know, this could actually be a really good fit. I'm very excited about working together with this guy, actually. Um, we've got a follow-up call for Monday. So so here we go, guys. Like, his budget was 200 a month. Um, I went to the call literally to save and to provide value. And it turns out that this guy is actually could be a really good fit for our uh, agency. So we're uh, very happy with that. I've got seven minutes till the next call that I need to prepare for. And I am very, very hungry, but we probably won't be able to eat until after the the third call of the day but yeah good day so far what's going on guys so we just had our first no show of the day and um, was the client that and um, basically booked the call organically without us reaching out to them so i guess we just never ever find out where they came from and um, i've been looking at their like application because it could also be that someone just filled it out and it's not real but it's a real company it exists we found the guy on linkedin 
but he's just not showed up for the call. It is a different time zone, so that might have played a part in it, but other than that, yeah, weird situation, hoping to get to the bottom of it. Now I've got a call that's not officially set with that previous client, as I mentioned, um, somewhere between now and the next hour. Then I've got one more call at half past five, and then we'll sort of wrap up the day. For now, I am extremely hungry, so let's just grab something to eat. What's going on guys? So, just finished up my lunch slash breakfast. Um, as you can see, it was a uh, plain, boring bowl of oats. And the reason for that is because I am experimenting with um, dopamine detoxes and my dopamine levels to see if I can basically get the dopamine from hard work rather than from other aspects of life. Um, easy way to explain this is if you um, have sugar in your tea, then obviously you know, the tea is sweet, but over time you will get used to it. And if you want that same level of sweetness, you'll need to add more sugar. Now, if someone else who is not used to having sugar in their tea drinks a or takes a sip of your tea, and you've got five sugars in in in, in your tea, which is something that you are used to, they will consider that extremely sweet. And that is because they are not used to having so much sugar in their tea. And that is basically the way I consider. The dopamine that I get from food. I'm used to having a, for example, in my oats, I have sweetness, cocoa powder, protein powder, bananas, cashew nuts, you know, all things that are adding to the flavor of my oats. And I've noticed that over time, to get that same level of sweetness and that same amount of dopamine, I need to add more ingredients to my oats. Now, that is obviously a very random decision to make to basically extract all the flavor from my oats. But like I said, I'm experimenting with other parts of my life to extract the dopamine from that so that I no longer get the dopamine from those, basically those aspects of my life and I do get it from uh, my hard work, from the work that I do. So for example, I've limited my time on Instagram. I have like the newsfeed eradicated on Facebook. I have the basically the recommended list on YouTube is blocked as well. Um, I try and get like deep work sessions in with no extractions. I also try and when I do watch YouTube, um, it has to be educational. It has to be informative, educational or relevant to my industry in any way, shape or form. And when I watch a video, what I do is I full screen the video. What does that do? It basically, uh, it basically removes all distractions because you know you have the video on the left usually, and then on the right you have all the recommended videos, on the you know below the video below the fold you have all the comments i've removed all of that i watched the video from start to finish and you know that way i basically get dopamine at the end of the video rather than by switching task because obviously switching task gives you a new piece of information a new shiny object and that gives you dopamine as well so i understand that this can be quite weird for those of you that aren't used to stuff like this um but like i said i'm just trying to biohack and get the most out of my levels of productivity and if i can get dopamine from finishing a important task rather than scrolling on social media then i'll be more likely to finish that task so that's my two cents um it's 25 to 3. Uh, potentially have a call at three and if not i have a call at half past five um so relatively relaxing sort of afternoon and um, i've got 10 loom videos to send for those of you that aren't used aren't familiar with loom it's basically video form video outreach so you record your video and then as soon as you fin finish recording it becomes a link and you can send a link to potential clients i've got 10 exactly 10 uh, even number so uh, to send to potential clients uh, from yesterday's outreach and again as i mentioned i'm testing out a new method of outreach for those that enroll in my coaching or my online course so that you know basically they can hit the ground running uh, but obviously i need to test it myself as well um for you know to see if it actually works rather than just giving them the theory and hoping that it works so i'm the guinea pig here i test it out so far it's been working very well all the calls from today apart from that one organic call that didn't show up everything has come from that outreach method so um sending 10 looms today and then um, potentially two more calls and then we'll wrap up this uh, video. All right guys, so I've just finished off two 
relatively light work blocks and um, had a little break in between as well and now we've got another hour until that last sales call of the day um, this so the calls I've had up until now have been discovery calls and um, this call is actually a second call so a sales call um, so we're hoping that we can basically close this deal um, because it is obviously a client that uh, we've been trying to work with uh, for a while. We've been doing a lot of follow-ups and we've built that rapport with this person. So we're hoping that this um, goes well and that we can close the deal. That would uh, wrap up this week on that nicely. And um, before that, I just thought I'll take this moment to discuss with you guys how the agency has and has not changed with uh, the coronavirus. So obviously, in terms of our agency itself, the structure, etc., it is an online business, which means that we are, are basically are limited in terms of the impact. You know, there's nothing um, out of the ordinary that that has changed for us. You know, it's not like we are now working from home after working in an office for so long. Um, we're used to the online, you know, working from our laptops. We're used to working on Zoom, etc. You know, working from home is normal to me. Um, it's not that I've now had to adjust to my new surroundings or anything like that. Um, the only thing that has really changed for me actually is the fact that I can't go to the gym. I used to go to the gym three to five times a week. Now I can't. Um, I've had to get creative with resistance bands and um, you know going for walks, etc. But in terms of the agency, I was very much a like just like a general agency. You know, we took on any type of client that uh, we thought we could get results for. And over time, when you start to scale, you notice that the structure will you know show some cracks, and it's no, it's not as efficient because you need to do a lot of work um, as opposed to just focusing all on the same type of client. You know, it's much more streamlined. So we transitioned from a sort of take on everyone type of agency to an e-commerce uh, type agency where we only helped web shops scale their business and as much as we enjoyed doing that um, again this was a lot of manual labor because every client or every type of e-commerce store is different different types of products etc and also obviously with drop shipping and you know e-com stores etc popping up everywhere it's hard for us to tell okay which type of business has actually got a business on which is just a dropshipping store trying to just throw a bunch of AliExpress and Alibaba products onto a store, etc. So we shied away from the e-com niche and we focused on lead generation and we got amazing results for a lot of our lead gen uh, clients. We focused on dentists and um, dentists and car dealerships at the time, which is also the reason for me creating those videos on my channel about how to do that. And we we really got really, really good results and we actually decided to focus on dentists going forward because we have a high quality service. We can deliver leads on demand for dental implants, Invisalign, etc. like the more upper tier um, high quality services that you can offer. So it's very, very profitable for us. It's very, very profitable for them as well. Then obviously this all happened and we quickly had to transition from lead generation back to e-commerce. Um, and again, you know, we, we had to basically restructure the business again, you know, make sure that the processes that we originally had set in place are back in place again. And uh, other than that, not really much has been different for us. Obviously, we had to pivot again from uh, lead generation back to e-commerce and um, you know that is where we're at now doing a lot of outreach to e-com stores info products uh, etc you know basically businesses that are not really impacted by the coronavirus at all um, just because it's easier to you know get them to understand the investments and how they can scale their business as opposed to someone who is now um, shutting up shop, you know, closed in terms of uh, the lockdown, etc. Trying to convince someone like that that they need to invest into Facebook ads. So uh, yeah, that is it in terms of the agency. Other than that, not really much has changed, and I understand that a lot of people are panicking now. It is a strange, unprecedented time, but you just need to think to yourself, okay, who is currently still in business, and how can I provide value to that person? More than not, it will be web shops, coaches, uh, e-commerce. To be fair, real estate, as far as I can tell, isn't really impacted all too much. Uh, for those of you that have been, you know, basically uh, follow my journey along, know that I have invested into real estate in the UK. And one of the first things I asked was, um, as we, I rang up the realtor, if you can call it a realtor. Uh, basically, they build the property, re, uh, refurbish it, and then 
um, I purchase individual units to rent out. Um, rang them up, asked them, you know, is there any type of delay or anything or anything that I need to know about now with everything that's going on. They mentioned that if there is a delay, which there currently is not, it won't be any more than a month. Other than that, everything is still you know on track. Um, Q4 2020, the property should be done. And then from there, we can obviously rent it out. So um, like I said, focus on businesses that uh, are still in business and see how we can provide value to them. Okay, so that is my little rant for today. I'm gonna uh, try and squeeze in one more work block and then um, I'll see you guys just before our last call of the day. So what I will do is I will leave my uh, calendar link along with this email. What you can do is you can book a time that works best for you. We can open a call and then potentially move forward from there. So thanks for your time, Brandon, and uh, hopefully we can speak soon. Okay guys, so I've just finished up. Um, sending a few looms, I now have a quick call with Elliot, the head of operations at Brand Panier, to prepare for the call with, uh, well basically our last call, uh, with our clients. And usually Elliot manages um, basically all the discovery calls for the coaching, make sure that people that do want to enroll into the coaching are right fit, are serious, etc. And um, as of now, I am managing most of the um, sales calls for the agency, and that's basically how we've uh, divided and conquered. But um, Elliot's discovery calls are done, so what we're going to do is sort of tag team um, on this call with this client, um, which we've done previously, worked quite well. Um, you know, basically, if I stop talking, Ellie can continue, and uh, vice versa, play good cop, bad cop, etc. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. And then after that, I'm probably going to wrap up this video uh, because I have finished almost everything on the to-do list. Yeah, I sat guard before when I was uh, just like looking through the modules for lifestyle design to see if any what any did them need revamping. We'd have to look into the Google Doc though. Yeah, just that um because it's weird that I got, when i go to responses i can't see his survey on the onboarding process so guys that was the last call of the day and um, we managed to sign the clients thousand dollars a month as you can see here so i'm um, happy with that to be fair high ticket econ store which is uh, something i'm excited about because obviously least impacted by corona um contrary to popular belief People are still very much buying um, high ticket items. In this case, it's um, an interior product. And we've actually looked up the stats prior to this call. The conversion rate on Facebook for luxury items is up by 142%, and the CPM is down by 18%, which means that the cost per 1,000 impressions from a media buyer's point of view is 18% cheaper, and the conversion rate is, like I said, 142% uh, higher. So the ideal time to be promoting your stuff on an e-com store right now and the ideal time for agency owners to reach out to e-com type clients. So um, after that, I went to have something to eat. I made uh, roti, which is basically like a Caribbean type food. It's um, potato, chicken, green beans on a wrap. Um, I'll leave a quick snippet of that of B-roll uh, for you guys to see. While I was eating my tea, I listen to a podcast by Joel Marion called Born to Impact, um, recommended to me by uh, Richard Uzi. Um, if you guys know any podcasts that are about self-improvement, self-development, biohacking, anything like that, just let me know. We'll leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely give them a listen. Usually I listen to football related um, podcasts, but obviously now with everything that's going on, there's not a lot to talk about. So definitely on the lookout for um, different types of podcasts so anyway what i'm going to do now to finish off the rest of the day is catch up with some of the coaching students check in with everyone see how everyone's going uh, getting on with everything and then uh, that's going to be my day uh, finished so hope you enjoyed this video if you want to become a part of the coaching program if you want to know how i land clients how i set meetings how i do my outreach etc the link will be in the description box down below um, so you can apply for a free discovery call where we basically see if we are a right fit. It's not a fake scarcity or anything like that. I generally you know, do only take on a few more clients for the coaching because it does cost my um, time. You know, It is manual input from me. So I do want to make sure that you are a good fit before I actually let you in on the coaching call. Anyway, like I said, hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave this video with a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys in the next video.